This is one very large crowd. Uh, this has got to be, as Donald Trump would say, the largest <laughs> Washington Day's dinner ever. Hey, Joella, I want to thank you so much uh, for that introduction. But I also more want to thank Joella and all the others who have been with the Moms Demand Action Group over the past oh, four or five years. Uh, what a difference they have made uh, in our state. You know, I can remember many late nights at the Capitol uh, when I would look up into the gallery and there would be the red shirts uh, sitting up there, not letting us, you know, ensuring that we were transparent, uh, that whatever action we took on the floor of the Senate would be known. They would know and they would let us know what they thought about it. So I very much appreciate it. I also want to congratulate moms uh, on the, uh, the finally, uh, some gun sense legislation that just went through the House of Representatives, I believe. <laughs> Well, it is, it is really good uh, to be back here at Washington Days. Um, whoever organized this, great job. This, it really has been smooth and, and the crowd is, is massive. So uh, last year I was actually here, some of you may recall that we had a panel. Uh, and that happened not long after I entered the uh, governor's race. You know, and after my remarks, uh, the Kansas City Star actually gave me a pretty hard time. Uh, they said that I had an understated personality, <laughs> that I was too measured, and that I was too low-keyed. They wondered right out loud in black and white print whether someone with those qualities could actually win. Well, there I am. Turned out maybe Kansans were looking for a little low-key, measured, competent leadership. <laughs> so I, seriously though, I come to announce that after eight years of dysfunction and disaster, some basic sanity has returned to Topeka. The, the ideological experiments are over. Make way for low drama. <laughs> Turns out that's what Kansans wanted. Not just a change in policy, but a change in tone. You know, I recognize that low-keyed and measured doesn't make for great rallies. Uh, but with everything going on in politics these days, I'd say we could use a little more hard work and a little less drama, both in Topeka and in Washington. Now, I've been in office for a total of seven weeks. Uh, feels like seven years at times. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, uh, we, as soon as we got in there, we started to take a deep dive. And let me tell you that things were even worse uh, than we thought. Uh, it does turn out that eight years of irresponsible budget decisions and reckless experiments can leave a state in a world of hurt. We've got neglected schools, agencies have been mismanaged, correctional facilities are understaffed, uh, wasteful, no bid contracts, whether we look over here or over there. We've got budget deficits. You sort of get the idea. It is a huge mess. Uh, in fact, I felt like when I went into my office, I had my broom in one hand, my calculator in the other, dressed in a very classy hazmat suit. <laughs> right, Lynn? <laughs> but as we make our way through the cobwebs and the waste, we are getting to work, and we are getting some things done. You know, I didn't run to be governor uh, just to be a goalkeeper who swats away bad things. I ran to rebuild this state and to improve the lives of Kansans.
and to restore this state uh, to what the state that's so special, a state we all call home. That mission started on day one. My first official action as your governor was to sign an executive order reinstating the protections for state employees who are gay, <laughs> lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. You. As I said during the campaign, discrimination has no place in Kansas, and it will not be tolerated. Employees need to feel safe and supported in their work environment. We need the best workers possible serving the state. That means we will be hiring based on qualifications and skills, period. We're going to start. We're going to start to finally set the right example for our children. And for me, that's always been what it's been about, our kids. Uh, making sure they have every opportunity to succeed. That's been my mission over the years, regardless of what position I held, political or non-political. In all my years in the State Senate, nothing made me angrier than the crisis we uncovered in our foster care system. 70 foster kids completely missing in the care of the state and yet unaccounted for. And the secretary at the time just shrugged her shoulders like it really wasn't her problem. You want to talk about measured and low-keyed? I wasn't particularly measured and low-keyed when I heard about that. It's completely unacceptable. And we are moving uh, to fix this crisis. This past week, I joined uh, DCF Secretary Laura Howard. Uh, Laura Howard uh, was with the Social Rehabilitative Services Agency back in the Sebelius administration, and probably before that. Uh, she is one of the national experts in the field of child welfare, and she has come on and agreed uh, to serve as secretary. And she and I just announced new initiatives uh, to increase transparency and improve our ability to locate the kids who are missing uh, or who have run away from custody. These children deserve so much more. All of our children deserve more than they've been getting in the past eight years. Our public schools became test tubes for an experiment gone terribly wrong. So we're going to stop experimenting with our schools and we're gonna start supporting them. We will properly... We will properly fund our schools this year, next year, the year after, and every year that I am your governor. You know, while I'm here on this topic, do we have uh, educators in the room, whether you're active, retired, school workers, uh, administrators, please stand up. Let's Give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> you know, if you ready? Okay. If you think my job is tough, try doing what they do for one day. It's about time we give them more support, not just the bare minimum required, but an actual investment in our children's future. And there's another investment that's long, long overdue. It's time to expand Medicaid here in Kansas. Our failure to act has already cost us over $3 billion in federal funding. That's our money that goes to Washington and doesn't come back. We could extend coverage to over 150,000 Kansans. 
And we could support our hospitals, rural and urban, because it really matters to families and to our communities. We actually have a bipartisan team in place right now to chart a path forward, because this really shouldn't be a partisan issue. Our other states are putting politics aside and doing what's right to drive down the cost and expand access. Take Senator Tester's beautiful home state of Montana, where a Democratic governor and a Republican legislature came together in a common sense way a few years ago to expand Medicaid. We must expand Medicaid here too. Now, we're, we're all gathered here uh, tonight because we're proud Democrats, with the exception of a few Republicans I see in the audience. And we're very welcome. But for so many of us, we're driven less by a blind allegiance to our political party and more by our deep desire to make things better for people who live around us. For our workers, for our students, for our teachers and for our retirees. It's about how to deliver for the people we fight for. That's what our guest speaker tonight has always been all about. It's hard to imagine someone who personifies his state as much as John Tester. This man truly brings Montana to Washington. He grew up working on his family farm. He's the real deal a working farmer, and he's got the scars to show for it. You know, in some parts of the country, they look to see whether a politician has street cred. Well, in Kansas and in Montana, we look to see whether they've got farm cred. And this guy got plenty. John Tester, you married your high school sweetheart, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then in his first campaign for the US Senate, he ran some ads about his buzz haircut. The point was that Washington could use a little more Montana charm. And ever since, he's been bringing that Montana-style common sense to a legislative body that could use a whole lot more of it. He immediately became a leader on ethics reform. And as a leading member of the Veterans Affairs Committee, he passed meaningful legislation to help veterans in rural communities get access to health care. That's a big deal. He's one of those senators, rare unfortunately, who goes to Washington and just does the right thing for the people who sent him there. He's not a big yeller or screamer, more of a doer. One might say he's a little low key. So he is my kind of guy. Please join me in welcoming Senator John Tester.